Okay, graphing inequalities. This is not that difficult, so if you are curious or need to learn this for class, I will teach you how to graph inequalities. It's not going to be that big of a deal. Um, of course, uh, you're going to want to watch the you know the entire video. I'll try to make this as uh, succinct as possible, uh, so we don't go too far in time. Um, additionally. Um, uh, if you're looking for more comprehensive instruction, uh, a lot more examples uh, solved step by step, I'll leave a link in the description of this video to my academy with the various courses that might interest you. And I have a lot of additional uh, math videos on my channel, so I hope you consider subscribing. Make sure you hit that bell notification if you do. And with that being said, let's get into graphing inequalities. So let's take a real basic um, example. Let's say I have 3x is greater than 12. So this is an inequality, okay? And we basically solve this very much like uh, solving an equation, okay, uh, a linear equation. So for example, if I had 3x is equal to 12, I would simply just divide both sides of the equation by 3, and I get x is equal to 4, okay? So very specifically, x, one value, is the solution to this equation. Now what distinguishes inequalities from equations is the following. Let's go ahead and actually solve this and I'll kind of highlight that. And now you might be saying to yourself, well, you know, I just want to see how to graph these things. I'm going to get to that in one second, but it's important to understand why, in fact, we do graph inequalities. All right, so let's go ahead and um, solve this guy. So we're going to do the same thing. We're going to divide both sides of the inequality by 3. I'm going to get x is greater than 4. Okay, so here I have x is greater than 4. Here I have x is equal to 4. So remember, this was an equation that we solved. In an equation, okay, generally speaking, okay, because there are exceptions, but in algebra, generally speaking, an equation is going to have a... Uh, uh, it's very a uh, very finite amount of uh, solutions. Okay, like for example, these linear equations just have simply one number that is the answer. Okay, there's one value, one and only one value, that is the solution to this equation. If you're solving quadratic equations, there's two values, and then so forth. Okay, so that's the main kind of idea behind equations at the basic algebra level. There's just one or two or three, whatever the case might be, very um, specific number of solutions for that equation. However, inequalities, entirely different ball game. Okay, So let's take a look at this inequality. Originally, we had 3x is greater than 12. Okay, so, uh, Now, this inequality, I, re I reduced it down. I simplified it down to this inequality. However, you're saying, well, where is the graphing part coming in? Well, I'm going to get to that, okay? Um, but yeah, I, if I just graph this thing and you don't understand why I'm graphing it, why it's necessary to graph, then you know, you're know you just kind of shortcutting yourself in, in terms of uh, uh, complete understanding of this topic. Okay, so x is greater than 4, okay? So here, x was equal to 4. Now, this solution is x is greater than 4. So what does this mean? Well, remember, x is just some, it is just a representation of any number, okay? So I said some number is greater than 4, okay? This is what this is saying. Some number greater than 4 is the solution to this inequality. Well, what could that number be? Well, 5 is greater than 4. So because 5 is greater than 4, 5 is a solution, okay? However, 5 is not the only number greater than 4. So is 6, 6 is a solution, 7 is a solution, 8, on and on and on and on, right? So how many solutions do we have to this inequality? Well, quite frankly, we have infinite number of um, solutions because any number greater than 4 all the way to infinity is a solution. So we're simply not going to write out all the numbers uh, out to infinity because that would take a very long time, right? So we just, <laughs> we're going to get a little practical. We're like, we're not going to write this out and we're not going to do this. So what we do, we graph. We use graphs to rep to represent the solution uh, solutions to inequalities. This is why we're graphing them, okay? Versus why we don't graph uh, the solutions to equations, okay?
generally speaking, all right? There might be exceptions, but this is why very specifically when <clears throat> you learn about inequalities, you're told to graph this guy. All right, so let's go ahead and graph this, and then we'll look at other examples here, okay? All right, so there's various different ways you can kind of approach this, but they're more or less the same. So what I like to do is just draw a regular number line. Sometimes you're given it, okay? I like to put the value zero right here, right? So this would be like one, two, three. This way, negative one, negative two. And you can adjust your scale, and you don't have to put all these values in here. And I'll, I'll show you a couple different uh, ways of doing it as we do so, uh, a few additional prompts. Okay, so... Here is how this works. Matter of fact, I'm going to adjust this scale right now. Okay. So I'll put zero. Let's say this is negative two, negative four, negative, oops, two. See, so look at that. Even I make mistakes here. Two, four, six, negative two, negative four, negative six. Okay. So again, just, you can just, you make a, a straight line like this. Make sure you put your arrows in there. That's important. So this is a number line. Okay. So this is a good reference, depending on how your teacher wants to see this, you know, um, sometimes you're given this, you, you can kind of play with uh, the style of number line, but we're gonna use this for example. So now what we're gonna do when we graph an inequality, we go to the number, in this case it's four, I always just start with an open circle, okay? Now, where are the numbers, where are the numbers in relationship to this four that are part of the solution? Well, we already said that five, six, seven, eight, all these guys going in this direction, five, six, seven, eight, are part of the solution. So we keep an open circle, very specifically an open circle, and then we just draw a line with the arrow to the right, okay? This is the solution. This is the same thing as saying X is greater than four, okay? So, um, for the most part, your teacher is going to want to see this and the graph, all right? Now, we're going to talk about when do you uh, circle in that, uh, that circle, okay? Sometimes you do see this notation, bracket, and close circle. That is that is uh, far less common than, than um, uh, or uh, half bracket. This is this is far less common than this notation, so I'm not even going to talk about that. But if your teacher uses something different, the concepts will be the same. <clears throat> but um, but uh, you're going to have to just you know do what how the, you know uh, the notation that they want you to do in class. Okay, let's talk about when this is a uh, a closed circle. So x is greater than four would be this is the graph to it. How about this guy right here? All right, I'm going to put zero. Let's put four. Now I'm going to close the circle and basically same graph, but now I have a closed in circle. Okay, what does this represent? Well, this is the same inequality with one exception. This is, this is the uh, solution to the inequality x is greater than or equal to four. So when you close in the circle, that means that the number okay, that you're on that number in and of itself is part of the solution. So for example, let's do it over here. X is greater than four. Well, five is greater than four is a solution. So a six, so a seven. But four is in fact greater than or equal to four. Okay, so four is a solution. Whereas over here, is four greater than four? No. Okay, so that's why we leave it open on... Um, on these guys right here, right? That's the main thing, okay? If if you have an equal to, whether it's greater than or less than, uh, greater than or equal to, or less than or equal to, okay, you have any of these guys, all right? You're gonna have a closed circle. If you have these guys, you're gonna have an open circle, right? Now, um, let's just go ahead and take this another uh, step here. We'll kind of play with, around with this, uh, basic inequality because being that we're on a topic of inequalities, this is expanded a little bit more so you can ace this in class, okay? Now, uh, another place where students uh, mess up is they'll get confused Let's, with this, uh, what I'm going to talk about here. Um, if you have a negative number, okay, like this, negative 3x is greater than 12, we're going to do the same steps as we did before. We're going to divide, but this time we're going to divide both sides of the inequality by a negative 3. 
So this is the huge thing you need to be aware of. Anytime you divide both sides of inequality in, in the effort to solve it by a negative number or multiply both sides of an inequality by a negative number, okay, so it's either multiplication of both sides or division by both sides, it's probably more common to divide by, uh, by a negative number, you have to flip, you have to flip the inequality. So here's the inequality, you're going to reverse it. Okay, so here, this is a greater than, you're going to, you're going to switch to less than. Okay, so if, it's, if it was less than, you would switch it, okay, to greater than. So you got to be really aware of that. So let's go ahead and just do this problem. So negative 3 divided by negative 3 is simply just going to be x, right, positive 1x. And here I'm going to have uh, negative 4. Okay, so let's go ahead and graph this guy. Let me make it a little bit better number line. So one of the things, too, depending on your teacher, you don't even have to put the reference mark for zero. But, yeah, I kind of like to do it. So here's zero. You know, you, uh, if you put a negative four there, I always start with the open circle. Even if I'm going to close it, I start with the open circle. Then I ask myself, should I close the circle? Is this a less than or equal to? No, it's not. So now what I have to determine is which side of this line. It's either going to be this side or it's going to be this side. Which side of this line is my my arrow going to go to right this is where students mess up they mess up in three uh places okay they, they don't understand this quite well they either close in the circle when they should leave it open or vice versa and then they get confused on which side the arrows should be going so the easiest way to uh determine which were which side the arrow is going to be going is just to pick a number uh off, off uh um uh, a simple number, either to the right or left, it doesn't make a uh, difference. I'll, I'm going to go ahead and just use zero, okay? So zero is to the right of negative four. So just ask yourself, is zero less than negative four, okay? Is zero less than negative four? Well, here, maybe zero might be a little confusing you a little bit. How about one, all right? Is one less than negative four, all right? If you have one dollar... Is that less money than negative $4, which is $4 in debt? No, okay? So over here, that doesn't make sense. That's false, right? Is negative 5 less than negative 4? Yes. Numbers that go this direction are, are, are becoming less and less and less. Okay, They're decreasing. Numbers going this way are increasing. And I only stress this. A lot of you might be like, yeah, I already know that. I only stress this is because students mess this up. They get confused, okay? So don't just put that arrow down very quickly, like, oh, okay, I know which way. Don't always double check with at least one reference number, and that way you'll know, okay? You'll be, like, absolutely positive. Because, you know, if you've taken it this far in the problem, you might as, you know, you might as well make sure that you're going to get full credit and you don't make a mistake. All right, so X is less than negative 4. I want all numbers that are less than negative 4, that, uh, and they're in this direction right there, okay? All right, so that's pretty much uh, it for the real basic type of problems. Let's take a look at a compound inequality. I'm not going to solve one. I have uh, other videos on my, uh, my channel and in my courses. I get all into that in much more detail. But let's take a look at a compound inequality. So when you have something like this, all right, this is just a basic linear inequality because the arrow is going to be going one direction. If you have something like this now, all right, where the x is in the middle of two numbers, this is a compound inequality because it's compound just basically means two things, right? If you have a compound fracture in your arm, that means your arm is kind of broken, right? Unfortunately, in two places. But this inequality, it's, it's good to understand what it means, okay? This is saying what? All, give me all x's, the solution to this inequality is all x's greater than negative 3. So here's negative 3. Give me all x's greater than negative 3, but not forever, okay? I don't want all the x's, neg negative 3, all the way to infinity. you got to stop, okay? At the same time, I just want all the x's that are less than or equal to 7, okay? So you're kind of, the, the solution is in between to uh, numbers on the number line, okay? So that's what the word compound uh, is referring to. So basically when you solve a compound inequality, which is another video altogether, you're still going to uh, 
be asked to graph these guys. So, so same principles um, uh, apply. So this time we're going to go ahead and just plot the numbers, negative 3, open circle, 7, open circle, just like this. Now we have to ask ourselves, uh, where are the solutions? The solutions are in between uh, negative 3 and 7. So I'm going to go here. I'm going to connect these two circles, and I'm going to double check and, and ensure I don't have any open or closed circles. Now here, because this is less than or equal to, I got to close up that circle. Okay, so you can kind of make your own steps if you want to check the circles first, and then do it however you're kind of comfortable. As long as you cover all this checklist, did I open? Uh, you know, I close in any circles that I shouldn't have, or should some circles be open? Do I have the arrows in the right place, etc. Okay, so. This is why um, uh, it's so important to practice. You got to practice this stuff because it can get uh, confusing, but it's in very important in your um, journey uh, in mathematics to you know to know how to graph inequalities. I do have other videos on how to graph two variable inequalities, which gets even much more kind of complicated. Okay, there's a lot of sub skills you need to know in there, but you can do it. Right? There's nothing, there's nothing in math that you can't do if you just kind of settle down and approach things, you know, one step at a time. All right. So hopefully, you know, you got something out of this video. Um, Again, I hope you consider subscribing, and if you do, make sure you hit that bell notification. And if you enjoyed the video, I'd definitely appreciate a thumbs up. And leave me some uh, feedback. Uh, I try to read as uh, many comments as I can uh, just to see how I'm doing and see how I can improve. But again, you know, uh, my passion is to teach math uh, and help you out. And I think that if you, you, know, if you really uh, pay attention to what I'm saying, you know, uh, you're going to you're going to do well in math. And it's because I have many, many years of, of teaching this stuff. OK. And uh, so, I, you know, I see myself as a, as, a, as a very good math teacher. I'm certainly not the only very good math teacher. So if you, you know, have um, a great teacher, OK, if you're lucky enough to be in a, a math class with a great teacher, make sure you take advantage and listen to them. And then, you know, obviously uh, get additional help uh, as you see fit. But with that being said, I definitely appreciate your time and have a great day.